Welcome to More Living with Jim Brogan, your source of information for living the best years of your life, your way. For more than a decade, host Jim Brogan and his expert guests have come together each week to share important news and advice that can impact the lives and well-being of those who are retired and those nearing retirement. Learn about issues like health and fitness, financial planning, social security benefits, investment advice, and more. And now, here's the host of More Living, Jim Brogan. Good morning, East Tennessee, and welcome to More Living with Jim Brogan, where it's all about living the best years of your life your way. You're listening to News Talk 98.7 WOKI. I'm Kevin Craigenbrink. I'm filling in for Jim this morning, and uh, we've got a great conversation lined up for you today. Uh, I'm sitting here this morning with Jason Altman from the Knoxville Track Club. Uh, we're going to get him involved in the conversation here in just a minute, but sort of as a way to kick this off, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about our topic and, uh, and and where we're headed this morning. So, you know, it's still the case that the leading cause of death in the United States is heart disease. And also in the top five are uh, stroke and coronary artery disease and all of those sorts of things as well. As well. And, you know, some of the things that contribute to that and some of the things that, that bring that to the forefront are weight and diet and exercise and all of those sorts of things. And uh, I, I can speak from my own experience and talk a little bit about how over the years of my life, I have struggled just a little bit to keep all of those things in balance. And if anybody out there has uh, struggled along with me, raise your hand silently wherever you are and say, yep, had that problem. You know, sometimes, you know, I, I, I'm on a seafood diet, which is a seafood and eat it. Uh, and, uh, and, and sometimes I just struggle just trying to be in that right place where my body and my life and all of those things are just in a great sense of balance. And so as we talk with Jason this morning, one of the things we're going to talk about is getting that life in balance and doing some of those things, doing the right things to sort of keep all those things happening as well. But then the other thing we're going to be talking about, we're going to sort of lead into today, uh, and I think maybe what Jason wants to talk most about today is upcoming, we've got the Knoxville Marathon just a few short weeks away. And and so, uh, you know, I, I I don't want to jump there too fast, but it's sort of interesting to consider this idea of how do you go from that guy who is sitting on the couch listening to Jim Brogan's radio program on a Saturday morning to a guy who says, I got to get up and I got to go run and I got to get myself ready to go run a marathon. You know, that's just sort of the the, the direction I sort of want to take this today and have that conversation. So, uh, uh, you know, you've heard people say, I've heard people say you're supposed to have 10,000 steps a day for good health. Right. And, and and so moving in that direction and starting to ask this question, we're going to get Jason involved here in this conversation. So Jason Altman is here. He is the is, it, is executive director. Jason, is that your title? I'm the race director for the Covenant Health Knoxville Marathon. Race director for the for the marathon. OK, so Jason, tell us a little bit about this whole concept of getting fit. And I want you to start with this. Tell us. Tell us about the bet. All right. So the bet you're. You've done some research, I see. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're going back to 2004, and I was three years removed from college, and I had I had torn my ACL playing soccer, uh, an indoor soccer league, and had, had finished the recovery there, like with the, the rehab, uh, you know, the ACL con- reconstruction surgery, uh, did, did some strengthening stuff, but really went into a period of a sedentary lifestyle for several years and i was working at a restaurant if you remember charlie peppers over by the mall uh i was working there and i was bartending at the time and and one of our lunch regulars his name's john purifoy john uh you know he he did all the the local 5ks around town and I was 25 at the time. He was probably about 50 years old, so about twice as old as I am. And he orders a salad for lunch. So I go back to the kitchen, and I get the salad, and I bring it back. So what, you know, 50 yards, you know, round trip? And I'm huffing and puffing when I come back. And he he tells me, Jason, you're really out of shape. And I'm like, no, no, no. I was, you know, I was an athlete growing up, and I'm... I'm still, you know, athlete. I'm just a little more big bone now than I was back then. <laughs> um, you know, which, of course, that's not true. But, <laughs> you know, he said, I bet I could beat you in a 5K. And I said, well, what's what's a 5K? Like five miles? And he said, no, it's 3.1 mile. I'm like, oh, well, even better. Yeah, let's let's do it. So we we picked a 5K here in town. It was about six weeks in advance. 
and decided both to train for it, and then we would compete just to see who who would you know go go faster, and we bet a steak dinner on it. Uh, <clears throat> starting out, I could not do a quarter mile without having to stop and walk. You know, I was so out of breath. And what I did was I would take you know my watch with me, and I would maybe jog for thirty seconds, and then I would run for a minute or walk for a minute and then alternate back and forth and maybe do that for a total of 10 minutes and slowly over time started to lengthen the run times, but then decrease the walk times and finally got to the point where after six weeks I could jog for the entire 5k distance. So that's, that's kind of how the, the bet started. And I guess if, if you want to know who won the race that day, we ran together for the first two miles because we, you know, it's kind of a bonding thing, you know, starting to, to train and healthier lifestyle. And, and then I pulled away from him at the very end. And, you know, I attribute that to the fact that I was half his age. Yeah, that's cheating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Father time was on my side at the time. Yeah, I'm sure that's true. Yeah. It's, it's a great story. And the reason I wanted to have you tell it here, right, mm-hmm. is because I think that a lot of people listening could be in that place like I've been in my life where you get to this place where you're not quite as fit as you think you should be. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and, you, and you're trying to get started again, but it can be so intimidating to get up off that couch. Yeah. And it's, it's not that we don't want to. It's that, uh, first of all, I'm not sure what to do and I'm not sure how to do it. And, and I'm afraid of how much time it's going to take. And there's all of these pieces and parts that go with that. Yeah. Right. And, and so, so, you know, tell me just just from your perspective, because I know you, you talk to a lot of people, you see a lot of people uh, and, and because of what you do, you engage, you know, like professional marathoners, the guys that are really good out there. Right. right. The guys that are running four minute miles and, or less for 26 miles, which I think is crazy. <laughs> yeah. But but you also ha- you become, because you're engaged with the Knoxville Track Club and you see those people, you see people who are not professional runners, but people just like average everyday people like me. Mm-hmm. That, that are just trying to get going, right? So sure. give me give me your your quick you know sixty second advice. All right, I'm 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 a couch potato. I've been a couch potato for a yeah. while. What do I do? Tell me, how do I do this? You know, I think you're right. Everyone has to start somewhere, and you know, you make that commitment. One of the things that my wife and I have ended up doing is we put working out on our schedule. You know, to make it a a priority. So. You know, if somebody wants to have a, a meeting at noon or they want to have, you know, coffee, like, no, I've already got my workout scheduled for this, you know, for that 8 a.m. time slot. So I, I can meet you at nine. But, you know, you, you have to make it a priority in your life. And you're right. It, it can be a little intimidating at first. But once you take that first step, I promise it, it gets easier each and every time. Do, do I have to do I have to run a 5K? Do I have to go 5K to get healthy? No. Not at all. It's just getting a little bit of exercise. You know, I'm sure you've got some of the studies, but you know that you know at least three times a week you should be doing something. You know, 45 minutes, and it can be you know even walking the neighborhood. You know, we live in a great neighborhood, and there's you know the city of Knoxville is doing so much with you know the walkability and sidewalks and greenways. You know, if you have dinner, just take your dog for the walk. You know, there's so many. I guess we live in such a, a day and age where people sit on the couch and. You know, technology's so easy, and you're streaming something on TV, or you're you're looking at your phone the entire time. But you know, why not just go out and take the dog for the walk, walk the neighborhood, and get a little bit of exercise? I like that idea. So yeah. you, I do have some research, of course I do, right? Of course, yeah, right. <laughs> and so, so something that I found interesting is this: that, you know, it, according to the research, 150 minutes a week mm-hmm. is the target exercise period for good health, right? And mm-hmm. so you think about that, that's really not that much a day. No. If, you, if, you're, if you're out there and you, if, you know, if, you, if you could look at, you know, 20 minutes a day walking, right? That counts. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a great way to think about it. It's a great way to get this whole thing started. And so we're going to keep talking about this. Uh, we're going to take a little break here. And uh, and then uh, at the end of this break, when we come back, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, uh, you know, how, how do you get a, a, a running program started? How do you get walking? What are the and I want to talk a little bit about the equipment that I might need. To right. do that, all right? Fair okay, enough. so you're listening to WOKI 98.7 News Talk, uh, and I'm uh, Kevin Craig and Brink sitting in for Jim Brogan. We'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> 
You're listening to More Living with Jim Brogan. During the week, Jim is a financial advisor, an author and speaker with an MBA from the University of Tennessee who specializes in helping people in or near retirement plan for the next phase of their lives. You can reach Brogan Financial during the week at 865-862-6800 or on the web at broganfinancial.com. And now, here's Senior Market Advisor Magazine's 2011 National Advisor of the Year and host of More Living, Jim Brogan. Welcome back to More Living right here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. I'm Kevin Craigenbrink, your host today, sitting in for Jim Brogan. Uh, and, and I'm talking with Jason Altman. We're talking about uh, getting off the couch and, and getting moving. And uh, we're, talking about, we're talking about getting ready for the Knoxville Marathon. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. You know, it's getting me a little bit pumped up. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I, now, I, let, me, let me be honest. Uh, I have never run a marathon. <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure I'm ever going to run a marathon marathon uh, but but I like the idea of getting out and running and I do run some and and so uh, this is a good conversation for me right I'm yeah. just sort of really into the conversation as in terms of you know am I asking the question even am I doing the right thing so I may get to that before we're done you might you <laughs> might help me out because uh, I don't think I'm very different from a lot of other folks uh, that might be out there asking that same question you know am I sure. doing the right things uh, and as, as we get back into this right so so I, w- I want to ask a couple of things that that sort of you know so you, you said at the at the close of the last segment, you know, about making sure you put it in your schedule and those sorts of things, right? Yeah, make it a priority. Right. I love that. But so one of the things I think about there, right? Okay, so all right, I'm, I'm a busy person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got a job. I've got a career. I've got activities. I've got family. I've got a million different things going on. And even if I'm retired, I can still be quite busy, right? Yeah. And, and so, so I want to ask this question, you know, so what, what are maybe three things I could do to get started, things I could plan, you know, specific things that would get me into sort of a pattern. You know, I, I think one of the biggest things, and, and I spent a few years working at Runner's Market, one of the local running shops here, and the the name is kind of a misnomer because, you know, probably 5% of the employee or the customers that came in were actually like, quote unquote, runners that do competitive road races. Most of the people that would come in were folks that, uh, you know, problematic feet, you know, their doctor had sent them, their physical therapists, you know, they, you know, there's, there's a whole, um, you know, lesson we could go on about how feet over pronate or supinate or, you know, different foot types. And if they need stability, neutral cushion shoes, uh, motion control, but we would see problematic feet and, you know, the quote unquote running industry does a phenomenal job with these supportive shoes geared for people's feet. So like I always say, start by going to your local running shop and that could be, you know, Rudder's Market, that could be New Balance Knoxville, that could be Fleet Feet and have somebody analyze your feet and make a recommendation based upon your particular foot type. Because if you start and you're, you know, you've got your $20 shoes that you picked up at Walmart and they're already killing your feet, you know, it, it all starts down at your feet there. And then it, you start having problems like, oh, you know, my shin splints or my knees are hurting me or my hips. And if if you get properly fitted, then that is going to help you so that when you start, you'll be fine. I like it. So start with the shoes. Start with the shoes. Uh, you know, there's one, one thing that Missy Kane, you know, she works for Covenant Health. I'm sure everyone listening knows Missy. One of the things that I admire that she says she always does is she keeps clothes in her trunk because she never knows like you know what hey so-and-so i was supposed to meet with them at you know lunchtime they canceled i'm just gonna go change clothes and walk on the greenway for these 45 minutes instead so like, like you said you've got a busy schedule but you never know when you might have the opportunity to catch you know call an audible and catch a, a run a walk or a hike somewhere so so okay so here's what i heard first number one mm-hmm. check out the shoes Right. Yes. Get the right shoes. Yep. Number two, get a bag and be ready to go. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Now I'm, I'm looking for three things. Right. I, I like I like threes. I don't know why. But so what, what's the third thing? All right. I, I got my shoes. Yeah. I got my I got my bag with my stuff in it. I'm ready to go. Now what? You know, I'd, I'd say the next thing is um, I always look at some sort of training plan and. You know, the the internet is wonderful now. I mean, there's some bad things on the internet, but it's wonderful now because you can go just about like, you know, Google or runnersworld.com, find, you know, some sort of training program, which is a, 
you know, we were talking a little bit about like the couch to 5K program, you know, a six to eight week outline like that. But you can find something that you can look at it and say, you know what, I think that's something that is attainable for me. Like, hey, this this one over here looks a little bit too ambitious. Like this is something that Jason might want to do at his point, this point in his life. But here is a, a good six week program where I'm, you know, like we talked earlier, you know, let 150 minutes per week. And there's a training plan that's good for me. So make a plan. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. But here, let me ask you this question, right? So, so I kind of think this might be a piece of it too. At least it is for me, right? When I first decided to to get fit, uh, I, I had let my body get into not the greatest of shape. I'll just leave it at that, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and so I decided to get fit, and and, uh, and I started walking. Uh, which I which I hope was the right thing to do. It certainly helped me, and I started working on some diet things and stuff like that. But here's what I discovered along the path for me, and I, I think this might be important for some of our listeners as well, was when I was doing it all by myself, it was a little harder. Yeah. And when I found somebody who wanted to be my running partner, well, my walking partner first, sure. <laughs> <laughs> that made it easier. Do you think that's true? I mean, what's the what do you think the value of, of having uh, an individual or a group or somebody to do it with you? Oh, it's the accountability. You know, think about I mean, we had a heck of a week with weather here, right? Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but the accountability and the camaraderie, uh, you, you know, so part of the build up to the Covenant Health Knoxville Marathon is we at the track club, we put on these weekly every saturday we do a weekly group run slash walk and we meet at different places around town but winter can be you know crazy with mother nature here in east tennessee and that's one of the things that people always tell me is you know what i really wanted to sleep in today and it was 45 degrees and drizzling but i knew that leanne was going to be there at the group walk this morning and i would be letting her down if i didn't show up so we both had to be there they both did it, and of course, you know they were glad that they did it. I've I've never, I've never had an an, uh, an experience where someone goes, "Man, I really regret going for that exercise." You always feel better about yourself after you've done that exercise, isn't that, Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. You regret not doing it because you chose, you know, sit on the couch or R- right. You skip it. You get you get the whole should have right. Yeah, yeah. I should have gotten up and done that, or I should have you know. Uh, so yeah, I I I did some of that last weekend. The should have. <laughs> I mean, I just, <laughs> yeah. But no, that's great. So, so you know, one of the things I, I like about, uh, you know, the story that we're hearing is that the Knoxville Tracks Club is there for that kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. And I think it's intimidating, though, right? Because it's called the Knoxville Track Club. Yeah. You know, and, and so, uh, all right, I'm not a track guy. I never ran track. I never ran marathons. I never ran half marathons. Right. Uh, uh, and, and so I'm thinking, man, I, I'm going to go out there and I, I'm going to show up at the Knoxville Track Club and everybody's going to be skinny mm-hmm. and they're going to be fit. <laughs> And they're going to be young yeah. and, and they're going to be like, you know, it, I'm going to be intimidated because I'm, I'm none of those things. Well, you know, the, the name, of course, we've been around for, you know, going on 58 years now. The name came because of a partnership that we had with the University of Tennessee and their track program. Um, you know, so for, from a branding and name perspective, you know, it's, it's hard to change that because it's been around nearly 60 years. But as far as like our focus you know, really the last decade is we're trying to be all inclusive to all types of people. Uh, you know, so we've extended the, um, the, t- the course time limits so that we are walker friendly, you know, whether that's the 5k or even whether that's the covenant health half marathon or the marathon. And, and one of the things that always gets me every year is I can be at the start line and look down and see thousands of people, but you know that every single person has a different, unique story of how they got there. And yeah, sure, there's, you know, the short, skinny guys and their short shorts. At the, you know, they've already run like a three mile warm up and they're going to do a three mile cool down afterwards. But that is the small, small minority. You know, 95, 98% are regular people, you know, like, that, they, like yourself that weren't sure if they could do this. Maybe this is their first event. Maybe that this is their second event. Their first went well, and they wanted to see if they could go a little bit further this time or if they could go a little bit faster than they did the last time. So everybody has a unique story, but they're all competing in the same event and participating in it together, which is beautiful. Yeah. 
I, I mean, that, that's, that's really the story, isn't it? Is, is, is that, you know, everybody can get up and go do it. And, and, and groups like the Knoxville Track Club are there to help us sort of break that barrier. Yeah. Right. And, and do it with others around us. Right. So I, I think that's incredibly cool. Right? Well, and, it, and it's a phenomenal sport because of the fact that, sure, you're, you, you know, maybe you're competing in a way on placement against somebody else, but really you're competing with yourself. You know, you're trying to make yourself better. You're trying to make yourself healthier. And maybe you can put a time on it like, hey, I can do a, I can walk a 5K in an hour and the next time I can do it in 55 minutes. But you're competing with yourself and you've got the other people. It's an incredible group of, of com, you know, folks that are, have this camaraderie and they, they bond together and they cheer each other on, even though you're, quote unquote, you know, competing against each other. I, I, th- I think that's exactly right. You know, I, I just I, I was telling you uh, this morning before the show that uh, that I had the opportunity to run a, a 5K uh, that was sponsored by the Knoxville Track Club. Um, yeah, our the, Thanksgiving the, race. The, the, the turkey trot. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and I remember going into that thinking, uh, OK, uh, I'm not a great runner. I, I got none of these things. Uh, when, when we decided to do it, you know, it was in the midsummer and uh, we're talking about training, you know, mm-hmm. for the for the for the 5K. And you start thinking about training. It's like, oh, does that mean I have to go out every day and run a 5k and 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 I'm, I, I think i would die if i tried to do that uh but but i didn't die yeah and we did do some training and i just set myself one goal i said i want to be able to run a 5k in less than 35 minutes hey that's a pretty good time and, and, well and I, I think i did okay i think it was my so 33 30 or something like that was my t- time for that for that 5k but it, it, the the idea that i had a goal that yeah. i had it in my mind right and, and of course when the thing starts you got the people who are going to finish in 15 minutes and, <laughs> and i only saw them for like 10 seconds yeah. they were gone right uh, <laughs> but the, the rest of us all around it people were all around me the whole time yeah, and I, I wasn't the, the the slowest one. I wasn't the fastest one. Right, but I felt like I was part of something, and other people were doing it with me, and it was good. And yeah. I really enjoyed that. It's funny. I get a lot of folks that always say, "Like, well, I'm just scared that I'll be the last one out there." Like, I promise. I you know, if there's two thousand people there, yeah, you're, you're not going to be the last one. You know, there's going to be somebody at the back that's yeah, um, yeah. You know, probably somebody that we have designated as our as our sweeper to make sure that they are last and <laughs> everybody else has the positive experience. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 really awesome. Well, listen, we're we're getting ready to take another break, and when we come mm-hmm. back from this break, I, I want to start talking about some of the specific programs that the Track Club puts on, and I also want to talk about some of the places and, and things that we can do here. I want to talk about where we can go run and walk and those sorts of things yeah. here in the Knoxville area, and and sort of take that approach to it. Right. Perfect. Hey, this has been a great conversation so far. We're not nearly done yet. Uh, you are still listening to uh, More Living with Jim Brogan here on uh, News Talk 98.7 WOKI. I'm Kevin Craig and Brink. We'll be back in just a minute. Hear his weekly radio show, television news appearances, and adult education classes taught at the University of Tennessee and Pellissippi State Community College. Jim taps into his extensive knowledge and experience to address issues important to living your best retirement. Join Jim every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI and visit him online at broganfinancial.com. And now, here's the host of More Living, Jim Brogan. Thanks for tuning in to More Living with Jim Brogan right here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. I'm Kevin Craigenbrink filling in for Jim today. Uh, we have been visiting this morning with Jason Altman from the Knoxville Track Club and the Knoxville Marathon. Uh, and we've been discussing how to get off the couch uh, and out there uh, doing some exercise, uh, getting ready for your first 5K maybe. Uh, but before we get back to that, it's time right now for Dollars and Cents with Jim Brogan. Want to be sure you are getting the most out of your retirement? For all the years of your retirement? That's the primary goal of More Living with Jim Brogan and our Dollars and Cents segment, where we provide you with an important financial tip that will help positively impact the quality of your life in retirement. And now, here's Jim with this week's Dollars and Cents tip. Let's talk today about your Medicare premiums and how you handle the management of those premiums, specifically how much you have to pay. You know, we do have means-tested benefits for Social Security and for Medicare. You know, the more you make on your Social Security benefit, it it can trigger additional taxation on your Social Security income. And then on Medicare, the more you make, the more premium you potentially have to pay. Now, most 
Medicare beneficiaries, if you're on Part B, you have to pay as of 2020 about $144 a month for your Part B. But if you make over certain income thresholds, you have to pay more. And for a married couple, if you make over $174,000 in income, and that's any income that contributes to your adjusted gross income. So if it shows up on your tax return and it goes to adjusted gross income, it's going to be counted in that number. So this is before your tax deduction or even your standard deduction. So anything, if you're over $174,000 for married filers, if you're a single filer, if you're over $87,000. And then there are different tiers. Initially, you know, the first tier you get hit with a surcharge of about almost $70, and then it just starts going up from there. And if, you know, up to a tier where you get hit with an additional over $350 per person. So married spouse, that'd be times two. So this is important to manage, and here's the challenge. Like your premium this year for Medicare Part B in 2020 is based on your income in 2018. Well, what if you had something change? And the most significant thing is what if you've retired? Well, believe it or not, you have a right under the law. If you retire, that's what's called a life-changing event in the Medicare rules. And you have a right to have your Medicare premium reduced based on your expected income after retirement. You have a right to have that changed. And there are several things that are defined as life-changing event, but the main one is if you retire or if you cut way back on your hours and you're going to earn much less money. But here's the thing. Let's say this year you're planning on selling a capital asset. Maybe you have a piece of real estate and you're going to sell it and make a profit. Or maybe you have stocks and you're going to sell them for and harvest those capital gains. Well, the, 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 the flip side of that is in two years, when you get to 2022, selling off those that capital asset is potentially going to trigger additional Medicare surcharges. So how you manage your Medicare premiums and understanding how all these things are, are, are interrelated is an important part of your retirement plan. So when you look at putting together a plan to take advantage of things like reduced capital gains rates, which many people have in that sweet spot of retirement between retirement age and age 72, you do have to at least be cognizant, how might this affect my Medicare premium two years from now? So a critical part of your planning, understanding how are those things, how are all of those things are related. That's our dollars and cents segment for this week. You can find this week's dollars and cents segment and others by visiting BroganFinancial.com. And we are back. Thank you, Jim, for that. Listen, Jason, talk to me a little bit about, okay, so so I, I may not want to be a runner, mm-hmm. but I do want to get out and start making a difference. I want to, I want to get off the couch, right? right? So, so where do I go in Knoxville? You know, we, we are so lucky with the work that both the city of Knoxville, uh, Knox County, and even the town of Farragut do as far as our greenway system and i've i've been on the city of knoxville's greenways commission the last seven years and the the knox county parks and rec board the last advisory board the last seven years where one of our focus was you know this connectability and making sure you know there's greenways here and there but they weren't all connected and you know part of the long-term plan was to get all of those connected and you know those those government entities are still working on you know new new connections whether it's on North Shore or Carnes and you know trying to make it so that you know down the road we could you know ride your bike all the way from downtown Knoxville all the way into the Smoky Mountains you know with, without having to be on the road and that's that's one of the long term goals. There's there's so many opportunities whether it's you know the Neyland Greenway, Third Creek Greenway, uh, Sequoia Greenway. Uh, over by West Hills, there's the Gene T Greenway by the West Side Y over there. Um, you know, if you go to the 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 city of Knoxville's website, they've got the list of all the different greenways. If you're into the trail thing, you know, there's so many great trail opportunities like out at Iams Nature Center. You know, Icy King Park. They're they're constantly developing those and the the great work that folks like Legacy Parks and you know obtaining the land and then AMBC, the Appalachian Mountain Bike Club, they go through and create the trails for the people that go out there it's we live in just a a great community here in east tennessee where everybody wants to improve the outdoor accessibility whether it's trails or greenways so those are places i like to go 
Um, you know, you, you mentioned a little bit earlier about, you know, having a buddy or someone, some accountability, you know, from a safety perspective, I always think that that's important. You know, we live in a day and age where people listen to music and they're distracted or they're looking at their phone while they're walking. So I, I like to have someone with you. If you don't have someone with you, at least notify someone else. Like, you know, I tell my wife, hey, I'm going to go run, you know, this morning. I'm going to go down on Neyland Drive. Here's where I'm parking, you know, so that she should know, hey, if I haven't heard from him and after an hour, then something might be up. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and then one of the things that we do with the track club is we we do put on some group social runs. So Monday nights we meet at Balter Beer Works. Uh, you know, you do a little bit of exercise and then maybe a little bit more drinking beer afterwards or <laughs> grab grab a bite to eat. Uh, you know, we meet over at Runner's Market in Western Plaza Shopping Center on Wednesday nights at 530. Uh, you know, Saturday mornings for these 16 weeks leading up until Covenant Health Marathon weekend we do a group run every Saturday at 8 a.m. So there's there's these great opportunities to meet a buddy and be able to, you know, log the miles with them. And we try to keep them on, you know, nice, safe places. Typically, we'll try to showcase some of the city of Knoxville greenways on those group runs. Nice. That's really cool. So you yeah. said something, I mean, laughing about Balter Beer Works. Right? It's kind of, <laughs> kind of it's a cool place, right? But sure. uh, so it, it does prompt me to ask the question, you know, in, in our, our, our conversation today is not specifically about diet, mm-hmm. right? But we know that, you know, yes, exercise matters for overall fitness, but so does diet, right? Sure. So I want to think a little bit about, okay, I'm talking about being walking, maybe even moving towards doing a 5K, sort of get, getting in that direction, right? And so are there some specific or, or even broad diet tips that you might say, okay, you, you want to become a little bit of a runner. Here's some things you should be thinking about in your diet. You know, I, I like to go back to, I started the, the show today talking about my personal story as part of that training, when I was doing my first 5K, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to exercise. I'll be honest. I was stopping at a fast food restaurant for breakfast every morning. And then for lunch, you know, I was working at a restaurant. So I was eating, you know, our deep fried chicken wing sandwich, you know, with bacon and cheese and everything else. And I just said, and, you know, like the sodas, you know, I was drinking Dr. Pepper or, or Coca-Cola. And I was like, you know what? Let's just try to go complete, like be all in on this thing. So I will go to the grocery store (laughs) and I will eat, you know, cereal and some fruit for breakfast before I come into work. And then maybe I would try to eat the grilled chicken, you know, something just a little bit healthier, you know, cut the sodas out or, you know, some, some folks go with like, you know, the diet sodas instead of the, the regular ones. But I was like, you know, I'll just stick with, you know, the waters and, you know, coffee and that kind of thing to get my caffeine. And, you know, personally, that I think that's that's part of the, you know, the exercise is part of it. But also for me, that's how I lost 50 pounds in the next year training for my first marathon because, yeah, half of it was maybe exercise, but half of it was diet. It was, it was a complete lifestyle change. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And I think that's, I think that's important that we sort of take that approach to it, right? It, it uh, is. And then uh, and, and sort of build, I think we talked about this a little bit earlier, the idea of building a balance into yeah. your life, right? And, and I also like, you know, give a shout out, to, if you're familiar with Eddie Raymond, Eddie's Health Shop, he's got uh, two locations here in town, one uh, Union Avenue and then the other uh, by Barnes and Noble by West Town Mall. So he is a great wealth of of knowledge for you know diet. If if you need some supplements because you know you need the extra protein, you need the extra iron, that kind of thing. He's got Bod Pod stuff. He's he's helped me a lot over the years with getting the right things because you know I burn a lot of calories, but what I need to get it back in. You know, definitely check out Eddie's Health Shop. Yeah, I, I, Ed, I'm a fan of Eddie's. Uh, I shop there. Uh, I love it. It's good stuff. So that's a good plug right there. That's good stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, we're, we're talking with Jason Altman. We're talking about uh, getting off the couch and getting active. Uh, and we're also talking about the Knoxville Marathon. So we're going to take one more break here. And when we come back, we're going to get serious about the marathon. We're going to hear right. some things about it, what's <laughs> coming up, how do we get ready for it, what can we do if we're not running in it, mm-hmm. and all of those sorts of things. Uh, you are listening to More Living on News Talk 98.7 WOK. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. 
Thank you for listening to More Living with Jim Brogan. If you miss any of today's show or want to listen to it again, visit BroganFinancial.com where you can access the podcast and other educational materials to help you in your journey through retirement. And now, here's Senior Market Advisor Magazine's 2011 National Advisor of the Year and host of More Living, Jim Brogan. You are listening to More Living here on 98.7 WOKI. I'm Kevin Craigenbrink, your host today, filling in for Jim Brogan. Uh, we, we've been talking all morning long about getting off the co- couch and, and uh, getting active and, and, uh, and moving a little bit more than maybe we've been used to. Uh, and Jason Altman has been our guest, and he is uh, the race director for the Knoxville Marathon. And so what, talk to me about the marathon. Talk to me about the event and, you know, sort of give me all of the, the, the ins and outs and, and what do I need to know about the marathon? Well, it's coming in seven weeks, whether we like it or not. It's like a freight train. Uh, it's coming. This will be our, our 16th annual event, weekend of March 28th, 29th. We like to think we've got something for everybody. We've got the full marathon, a half marathon, a two-person relay, four-person relay, uh, those are all on Sunday morning, and then I'll okay. S- wait, wait, wait. Back up. I got. I got to jump in here, right? Sure. So, a question, because people. I think some people know this, but some people don't. How long is a marathon actually? Twenty six point two miles. And and a half marathon then is thirteen point one miles. Correct. Okay. And what uh, a, a what a relay what? So we do a two person relay, so you can take the marathon distance and split it up amongst two people. And the idea there is to get. You know, let's say you and I were a relay team. Yeah. And I do the first half, but you really want to see the second half of the course because we go through so many awesome neighborhoods. You know, we start with Sequoia Hills, we go through Fort Sanders, but then the second half of the course hits uh, Fourth and Gill, Park Ridge, Island Home. And if you're like, man, I really want to go run through Island Home and Fourth and Gill, that way we do a two person relay. There's a four person relay where then you also break it into four individual legs. Uh, and then Saturday night, we have our 5K. 3.1 miles, and then we have our Covenant Kids Run, which is the one-mile fun run for the little kids. Got it. Okay, so so wait, from little kids all the way up to senior adults, yes. a- anybody can get out there and run? Anybody can, and okay. you don't have to just run. You know, we, we keep the time limits long enough so that they are walker-friendly. If you're, if you're doing the marathon or the half marathon on Sunday, the time limit is uh, seven hours, so it's like a 16-minute per mile pace you know if if folks went to the mall and they christmas shopped at west town mall this this past christmas i guarantee you were doing a brisk mall walk and you probably did a 5k in the entire <laughs> right. time. probably right yeah so, so you could walk the 5k if you had to nice yeah that's pretty cool you so, but you could even walk the, the the marathon if you wanted to you can yeah do people do that you know we get a handful probably two dozen that will walk the full marathon uh, just because it's a longer distance, we get a couple hundred people that will walk the half marathon because they can complete it in three and a half to four hours. Yeah. And then, you know, the 5K Saturday night, we keep it open for over an hour. So we'll get, uh, you know, we get so many companies, you know, corporate companies like Pilot Flying J and Clayton, where they, maybe they have a lot of folks that work in their call centers. They will come out and just walk the event to try to get an employee team together. You know, a little camaraderie amongst the team there, but they're exclusively walkers. But we'll have close to a thousand walkers in the five k alone. Wow, that's yeah. a lot of people. It is. So, so it's seven weeks before the event, right? We have seven weeks till race week. Is it too late for me to get ready to be involved in this? No, not at all. No, I still got time yeah. to get fit enough to go. You do, and it. And in most of the the couch to 5K programs that you will see out there are six to eight weeks. So even if you are on the couch right now and you're like, you know what, I'd like to I'd like to participate in that, and I'd like to be able to do the 5K, there's still ample time. You know, if if you're looking at maybe the marathon distance and you're on the couch and you haven't been exercises, I'd, I'd eh, maybe try the 5K this year and look at the marathon for next year. But definitely, there's still plenty of time to get ready for the 5K. Okay, so if I get up and get going, mm-hmm. I can be a part of this. Absolutely. All right. Now, you were telling me earlier, talk to me about this special guest you've got coming this year. Yeah, so it's it's an Olympic year. Um, you know, so we thought that, that we should bring in a dynamic speaker with an Olympic background. And we talked to Frank Shorter. 
He won the gold medal in 1972 in the Olympic Marathon in Munich. And then he won the silver medal in 1976 in Montreal. And he's the only American who has won multiple medals in the marathon distance. Because you, know, you think about that, the Olympics are only every four years, right? So the opportunities to win a medal are few and far between. And, you know, as a competitive runner, your, your window is probably pretty limited. So, so Frank is coming in. He's going to be our guest speaker on Saturday, March 28th at three o'clock down at the world's fair exhibition hall. Uh, it's part of our packet pickup. We do an expo where we've got over 70 vendors who set up. They, they give away some, you know, samples of food and drinks, and then they're selling discounted clothes and apparel. We have nonprofits that come and, you know, trying to raise awareness for their, their causes, uh, the expo is is where folks who are registered pick up their packets. It's where folks that haven't registered but want to participate can still sign up. But then we also have it open and free to the general public. So if you just want to come down and hear Frank speak or you just want to come down and shop the vendors, you're welcome to. You don't have to be registered for the event in order to attend the expo. That's kind of cool. Yeah. It is. So, uh, all right. So it's going to be off the wall a little bit here. But mm -hmm. so uh, if I'm participating, right? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be really excited if I finish in the seven hour limit. Sure. Okay. What's the fastest guy going to do? Uh, two hours, 20 minutes, two hours and 20 minutes to go 26 miles. Correct. <laughs> Pretty fast. huh? You see the shock look on my face over here, right? Yeah. That's, that's really fast. Seriously. Yeah. That's amazing. Up and down hills and the whole bit. Yep. Right. Oh, wow. That's that's yeah. incredible. All right. So, but some people are listening to this and they're saying, man, I am not going to go out and run mm -hmm. in the Knoxville Marathon. I'm not going to run a 5K. I'm not going to run a, a half marathon. Uh, I, I might walk a little bit to get out there to watch. Right. But they might want to be involved because it's a great community event. So if it I'm is. not a runner, I'm not, I don't want to get involved in that way. What can I do? Can I get involved in this thing even if I don't want to be a runner? Yeah, we need 1,200 volunteers to execute race weekend. And that's everything from working water stops to being a course monitor to handing out the T-shirts and the goodie bags at the expo on Saturday. Uh, you know, it's, it's easy to sign up. You go to our website, KnoxvilleMarathon.com. There's a volunteer tab there, and you get to select your day, your time slot, and then what job duty you would like to do. And then we like to reward our volunteers with a free T-shirt because, you know, people do anything for a T-shirt. Uh, and then we have a volunteer appreciation party at Calhoun's on the River after the race day. You know, it's just a nice little thank you to the volunteers for helping out. Nice. So if I want to volunteer, tell me again where I go to look for it. KnoxvilleMarathon.com and click on the volunteer tab. KnoxvilleMarathon.com, click on volunteers. All right. If I want to run, same website? KnoxvilleMarathon.com, click on the register tab. <laughs> nice. Okay. All right. We've got just a, about a minute left or a little bit more than that to talk about this. Mm -hmm. What more do you want people to hear? What, what's the most important thing you want people to hear now? Well, you know, it's tied into that volunteer side. Even if you're a little bit hesitant about being involved in, like, I don't know if I could do it. You know, he's talking about the five count, if I can do it. Come out and volunteer. Come down and spectate. I guarantee you we're running through your neighborhood because we're going through all these great historic Knoxville neighborhoods. The energy and the atmosphere sucks people in. Like, I, I talked to someone one year. She goes, I volunteered, and I thought it was so awesome. I needed to participate the next year. So she did the 5K. The following year, she got a relay team together. The next year, she did the half marathon. Year five, she did the full marathon. And she said, I never in my wildest dreams thought I would do a full marathon, but I was exposed to it with that volunteer opportunity. And here I am five years later, you know, she was in her 60s. She didn't have the quote unquote typical runner body type. But like we said at the onset, she's one of 100,000 stories that we've had over the last 15 years. And her story was incredible because she came from volunteerism all the way up to the full marathon. That is so awesome. Yeah. Man, Jason, it's been great having you on the show this morning. Yeah, I appreciate Thank you it. so much for what you've shared with us. Uh, we, we've spent the morning talking about getting off the couch and getting ready to go out and do something different. Um, I appreciate you all listening in today to uh, More Living with Jim Brogan. Uh, a greater community provides for more living so you can live the best years of your life your way. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you next time on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Have a great week.
The views expressed by Jim Brogan and his guests are not that of Cumulus Media. Any discussion of financial, legal, and tax planning strategies is not intended to be individualized advice and is general in nature. Always consult with your advisor for advice specific to your needs. This program's content does not represent a recommendation of any particular security, strategy, or investment by Jim Brogan or Brogan Financial Incorporated.